Welcome po sa inyong lahat sa ating pong uh, online, Sunday online worship and uh, sa ating mga nasa Facebook at sa ating mga nasa Zoom. Good morning po sa inyong lahat. And we will now go to our uh, study of the Word of God this morning. We just want you to open your spirit and I want you to receive this by your spirit not only by your mind. Because the word of God is spirit and it gives life. Amen? So this morning, we'll be talking about one of the interesting topics sa Christendom, especially sa ating pong mga Pilipino. Sa isa pong survey na aking nabasa ay... Uh, Sinasabi po nila na ang Pilipino daw po ang number two sa buong mundo na bansa na idolatrous. Bakit po number two ang Pilipinas? Sino number one? Mexico. Number two ang Pilipinas sapagkat sa dami po nating idol dito sa ating bansa, Halos lahat ng kalsada, barangay, even municipalities are named after an idol. And people has a lot of idols. Either corporate idols or community idols. Ang dami po. Diba? We have major idols in the Philippines. One in Quiapo. Every January 9, yung kanilang Black Nazarene. We have in Bicol, the um, Peña Francia. We have the Cebu, the, Bis the Visayas region, including Mindanao, the Santo Nino. Okay? So, at hindi katakataka na ating bansa ay mahirap, is because of these idols. And during the 80s, so ako yung born again, this is one of the hot topics na pinag-uusapan. At madalas, Christians are very careful not to discuss idolatry because their parents or their friends ay maka-offend. We had a friend, ngayon pastor na kasama namin doon sa church noon, sa Bicol, Eh, nung siya inaborn again, ang ginawa niya ay kinuha nila yung, pus yung pusa niya, nilagay niya doon sa ibabaw ng altar ng kanyang nanay. Of course, pagkatapos, ginulat niya yung pusa. So ano mangyayari? Ay hindi gagalaw yung pusa, hulog yung mga, ano, yung mga idols. At sabi niya, nay, yung pong mga idols, sinira po ng pusa. Sabi nung nanay, ay kung hindi ko po alam, nilagay mo yan. Oh, because they knew na yung anak niya na born again na, and kaya marami nung panahon na yun, eh, talaga nagbabasag ng mga idols. And a lot of Catholics or even yung kanilang mga kamag-anak were offended because they, you know, they destroy those idols. I'm not saying it's wrong. It's, uh, uh, it's right, I mean. To destroy those idols. Now, pero kung kayo mag-destroy, wag nyo namang i-display dun sa, sa, tawag dyan, sa maraming tao. Do it secretly. Because you are dealing with the spirit. Second, ang mga Pilipino mahilig sa idols. Di ba ang tawag natin, Lodi? Oh. Si Rapi Tulpo, ang tawag sa kanya, Idol Rapi. Oh, di ba? Ang mga Pilipino, likas sa Pilipino natin o sa kultura natin ang mag-idol ng mga bagay-bagay including ang tao. Nakuha niyo po? Meron pong isang kwento dito sa Mindanao. Nag-church planting yung isang pastor sa isang municipality dito sa Mindanao. Nang pangalan ng municipality ay Santo Nino. At nung siya ay nag-registered o nag-plant nag-church planting ang ipinangalan niya sa kanyang simbahan ay ulan niyo Santo Nino Christian Fellowship 
at least naborn ang yun si Santo Nino, sabi nila. But later on, they realize it's a wrong name. <laughs> so they have to change it. Now, this morning, we will be talking about idols and the power of this and how it affects our personal life. At madalas, akala natin na tayo born again na ngayon, wala na tayong idols, yan ang malaki natin pagkakamali. Mas maraming idols ang mga Christian today kumpara noon. And this morning, this idol was taken from the book of Katie Souza and Francis Miles. Credit to them. Okay, this morning, pag-usapan na po natin itong uh, topic na ito. I want you to receive this by your heart and by your spirit, not by your mind. Why? Because your mind will, ano eh, will reason. Okay? So, Mahalaga na ito ay ating tanggapin ng ating mga espiritu. Let's read the scripture. Mm -hmm. Di ba sabi sa Exodus? You shall have no other gods before or beside me. You shall not make yourself any grieved image to worship it or any likeness of anything that is in the heavens above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down yourself to them or serve them, for I, the Lord, your God, am I a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the Father upon the children to the third and fourth generation to those who hate me. So yung ating hmm, uh, kasalanan, kasalanan ng ating mga ninuno na idolatry, it goes down to the third and fourth generations. Karamihan sa atin ngayon na born again, yung ating mga magulang hindi naman born again. That's why yung idolatry nila is down the line. Okay? Yung effect ng idolatry nito ay hanggang sa atin. Madalas ang katwira ng mga katoliko, sabi niya, hindi naman namin sinasamba yan eh. Yes, palagay na natin for the sake of argument. But sabi ni Lord, you shall not make yourself any grieven image. So sa paggawa niyo pa lang ng image, you already violated the first commandment. Di ba? Sa ten commandments ng katolik, tinanggal nila yan eh. Yung verse 4. And then they divide yung ana yung ano yung sa baba. So nagmukhang Ten Commandments. Exodus 20 verses 3 to 5. So this is <laughs> the breaking of the first commandment ni Lord. Kaya ayaw ni Lord na may kaagaw, di ba? Kasi jealous god siya, sabi niya. Siya lang ang dapat Okay, wala siyang kaagaw. Now, what are idols? Let's define it. In biblical terms, an idol is anything. It's either a person or thing that you place or give first place to above God. Idols can be anything or anyone that has captured your thoughts. More than Jesus has. Kaya hindi pwedeng sabihin ng mga born again Christians, wala silang idols. Marami nga ngayon eh. Idols are also things that in many different ways will steal from you. Next Sunday pag-usapan natin yan. How these idols steals from us. Magdanakaw po yung idols na yan. Kaya hindi nakakapagtaka na ang Pilipinas ay mahirap at maraming magnanakaw it because of these idols that are operating over their lives. Most notably, idols are time stealers who always go after your secret place with the Lord. So mga Christian, it, is, it steals our time with the Lord. 
Oh. If social media addiction outweighs your worship in your prayer closet, then you're standing on dangerous ground. Kaya sabihin mo, mga Christian, walang idols, mas marami. Number one, social media. It steals our time. I'm not saying social media is wrong. But anything na mag-steal ng time natin kay Lord, that is an idol. Idols will steal your money by luring you to buy bigger home that you cannot manage effectively. Pasin mo yung mayayaman? Oh, shopping spree, bili dito, bili doon. Ang yaman nila, ang dami nilang bahay. Hindi man nila pwedeng tirhan ng sabay-sabay. Nak nakita nyo? They also push you to overspend on items such as home, home goods, clothing, and paste product that end up unused. Nasubukan nyo na ba mag-shopping spree? And then yung pinag-shopping nyo, ando, hindi nyo naman nagagamit. Ang tawag nila doon, shopaholic. However, after you acquire the costly things, you discover they fail miserably at fulfilling you. You thought na kapag binili mo ang bagay na ito, mga pagpapasaya sa'yo. At the end of the day, hindi mo man lang nagamit. And you are frustrated na hindi magbigay sa'yo ng kaligayahan. And soon, you find yourself repeating the cycle over and over again. While spending more money and energy, it's time only to be disappointed. Shopaholics ang tawag nila doon. Kung may alcoholics, merong shopaholics. They keep on shopping things and things and buying things that they will never satisfy themselves. Pag-uwi, frustrated din sila kasi hindi rin na-satisfy yung kanilang mga inner cravings, yung needs. Some will say idols are an Old Testament subject. At sabi pa nga nila, we are under grace, not under the law. They make it excuse. Sabi ng John, oh, sabi na, so 1 John 5.21, Little children, keep yourself from idols. Oh, New Testament na yan. Ha? The idols are false gods from anything and everything that would occupy the place in your heart due to God from any sort of substitute for Him that would take place in your life. Amplified verse. Code. You see? Maliwanag. Pinag-iingat tayo. Why? Because these idols steals something from us. At ang mabigat nito, this idol stays in our soul. Not in your spirit, but in your soul. Today's church is worshiping idols more than ever. Diba? Kahit ngayon pagtitipon paglinggo, they cannot even find themselves to be in the church. Why? Ay, Pastor BC, maraming requirements. Ganito, ganyan, ganyan. Eh, malamiwanag na sabi ng Bible, do not neglect the gathering of the assembly. Kaya nga, I decided to live it in Facebook para wala nang dahilan yung mga social media addicts. At least, when they scroll my page, they can see, oh, mayroon pala dito ang preaching. I can still, you know, spend my time watching. When the Holy Spirit tells you that He has searched you and found no idol, that is the day you are set free from idols. Kaya at this moment, you cannot say that ano, you are free from idols. I'm speaking to the Christians today. But when the Holy Spirit will tell you that there is no idol in your heart, praise the Lord. That is the day of breakthrough. Pero hanggat sinasabi niya na meron kang idol, you better listen to God. Now, there was a story. This is a true story mentioned by uh, Kathy Sosa in, this book, in, his, in her book. 
merong ininter- meron silang pinagpi-pray na isang tao na merong nagii-exhibit ng symptoms ng Alzheimer disease. He would forget basic skills like how to type and after he would watch a movie, he couldn't even remember any of the plot. Hindi niya matandaan yung kwento. He often was unable to complete the sentences. So yung asawa niya ang magtutuloy nung kanyang gustong sabihin. He went to sleep. He would enter into a coma-like sleep from which you couldn't wake him up. So yun yung kanyang uh, physical situations. And when the doctor tested him, they found out that he did not have Alzheimer, but rather an unusual disease where excessive levels of ammonia were being stored in his brain. Napansin nyo? Sabi niya, sabi ng doktor, may ammonia, sobra yung level ng ammonia sa kanyang katawan. Tandaan natin yung ammonia, all human beings have ammonia in their bodies in small amount because it helps us to process our food and also aid other function in the body. And they discover that the word ammonia comes from the Greek word ammonikos or ammon because ammonia was first obtained from a region near the temple of the god Ammon in Libya and Egypt. Ammon was one of the many gods the Egyptian worship. So itong ammonia na itong sakit na ito, excessive ammonia in his brain was due to that spirit, to that idols. When he got delivered at pinagpray siya na, 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 na expose yung gods and they bring it before the courts and then it was natanggal sa tao. Kaya pala sabi nung lalaki, every time siya maliligo, nangakaamoy siya ng ammonia na, na lumalabas sa kanyang katawan. And now, after that deliverance, that prayers, kapag siya naliligo, hindi na lumalabas yung ammonia at bumalik siya sa normal. Wala na yung kanyang dating sakit. You see? They found out that it is caused by that idols that is operating in his body. Now, idols are also deaf, dumb, blind, and crippled. Bakit ko nasabi? Sabi ng Psalm 106, verse 36 to 37, And serve their idol which were a snare to them. Yes, they sacrificed their son and their daughters to demons. These idols are what? Demons. Whether they like it or not. Whether they will accept it or not. You are worshiping demons. You go to a Catholic church, oh, there's demon there. I'm saying this, offend kayo, but that is what the Bible says. Israelite worship idols, they were placing their lives in the hands of evil spirit that these ancient statues represented. Tandaan niyo po, in every idols, there is a spirit behind in this idol. Nakuha niyo po, may spirit na kanyang nire-represent. When you make anything into an idol, you are inviting a demonic spirit to get involved with you. That's why kapag tayo ay nag-worship sa idols, we will be affected because you are giving that demons a legal right. <laughs> to intervene in your life. Because this demon wants to possess. Tandaan niyo po. These demons are before, these are the Nephilims. Nung namatay sila, nawala na sila ng body, physical body. And that's why they're looking for a physical body to possess. So when you make anything into an idol, including your children or your spouse, 
you are inviting a demonic spirit to attack you. Yan po ang katotohanan. So what are these idols able to do? Anong nagagawa nila? The Bible says idols are deaf, dime, dumb, blind, and crippled. In Psalm 135 verse 16, it says idols have mouth but they speak not. They have eyes but they see not. The book of Revelation says that the people did not stop worshiping demons, their idols of gold, silver, silver, bronze, stone, and wood idols that cannot see, hear, or walk. So what this mean and how this affect us, itong idols na ito na deaf, dumb, blind, and crippled. It means... That since all idols cannot see, cannot hear, or walk, they can make you have this kind of issue in your physical body. According to the law of worship, you become like what you worship. So do you know why so many miracles of blind eyes opening, deaf ears opening, and mute speaking, and lame walking happens? in a third world countries. Pag may dumating na mga uh, evangelists, nag-preach sila ng word of God and the power of God will come, people get healed. Karamihan sa gumagaling, yung mga bulag, yung mga bingi, yung mga pipi na kapagsalita at yung mga pilay nakakalakad. Bakit? Many of their cultures are open to the public worship of idols. Kaya look at this, look at the Philippines. Ang daming bulag, ang daming pipi, ang daming ganito may sakit. Why? They are affected by these idols. So when someone preaches the gospel of Jesus in these nations, and the people forsake their idols to serve the living God, the miracles follow naturally. Remember nung si... Uh, Jacob was going to going back to Esau. Eh, takot siya kasi doon sa mga nation sa dadaanan niya, baka siya patayin. Sabi ni Lord, you go, you built an altar in Bethel. Pero may condition si Lord. Alisin niyo yung lahat ng mga idols. You see? Very crucial yan. Since idols cannot speak, they can cause you to have a muttering and shattering in your speech. So ang cause ng pagiging pipi nila o bulag or pilay is because of the idol that is operating over their lives. Idol, idols can cause deafness and other hearing issues such as an ear infection, tin, tinnitus, and ringing, just a name of a few. Mark chapter 9 and Matthew 17 contains the story of Jesus casting a deaf and dumb spirit out of a child. Dalala niya ito. Kinakas out ng mga demonyo, ayo, ayo umalis. Diba? When Jesus cast it out, diba? lumayas. How did that poor boy get to be in that condition? The word dumb in Greek is alalos. Ibig sabihin, speechless, dumb, Lacking the faculty of speech. Because the defects of demoniacs were taught to proceed, proceed from the nature and peculiarities of the demon by which they were possessed. Kung ano yung demonyo nagpossess sa kanya, magmamanifest sa kanyang katawan. E yung demon, idols are deaf, dumb, blind, and crippled. So kapag they were possessed by this spirit, Ano man yung mga spirit na ito, magmamanifest sa katawan nila. This child was both deaf and dumb because he was displaying the characteristic of the demon that possessed this child. Another scripture in Matthew 17.15. Di ba? The child was epileptic or they called it moonstruck because in ancient time, the people believed the moon goddess was one of the most commonly worshipped idol 
in ancient time. The moon's rock means this, this moon, the idol of the moon, will have an effect in you. You will be possessed by the spirit behind the moon. Even today, moon is worshipped by many like the Japanese. Nasa plug pa nga nila. And its cycles are used to help witches, warlocks, and sorcerers cast evil spells over people to gain more authority over them. Yung mga witches, ginagamit nila yung moon, yung spirit behind the moon. And many times, idols are also behind blindness and other issues with such a, with visions such as dry eye, bloaters, and cataracts. Mark 10, 46-52. Remember si Bartimaeus? The Bible tells us that before Jesus healed him, he sat in the street of Jerusalem begging for his existence because he was blind. He was called Blind Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus. And the word Timaeus in Greek, it means to defile oneself with idols. So yung tatay ni, Timote, ni Bartimaeus was into idolatry. That's why yung anak niya ay ano, uh, possessed by this idol. He had not only defiled himself with his worship of these idols, but also corrupted his family. Nahawa pati yung anak niya. At ang paniniwala ng mga ancient Israel, they believe that the physical defects of demoniacs were a direct result of the nature and peculiarities of the demons by which they were possessed. So kung ano yung demonyo, magmamanipest sa kanila. Eh, demons are blind. Demons are deaf. They are dumb. And they are crippled. Kaya madalas ang pinapagaling ni Lord, di ba? Yung mga blind, deaf, and crippled. And how they get healed? The demons were cast out from their body and soul. I believe the idols in Bartimaeus' life caused him to lose his eyesight. Idols can also cause you to be crippled in your physical body and to suffer from various diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, scoliosis, and other skeletal and muscular issue. So yun po yung ano, result when the idols take possession of your physical body. Sabi niya, i-Christian na ako. Yes, your spirit is secured. But the moment you open your life, you give license to the devil, you give him legal right to attack you. Kaya nga may korte sa langit. Bakit? Sabi ni Lord, 1 John 1, 9, that if you confess your sin, he is just and faithful to forgive you and to cleanse you from all right unrighteousness. Chapter 2, verse 1, sabi niya, I tell you this thing that you will not sin, but if you sin, you have an advocate in heaven. So God is telling us, no kayo na born again, na deal yung mga nakaraang kasalanan mo. And by the grace of God, he provided a court. Because anytime, the devil can accuse you in that court because you have committed sin. And that sin, give license to the devil to attack you. In Acts 14, it says there was a man in Lystra who couldn't use his feet. He was crippled from birth. However, as he was sat listening to the Apostle Paul preaching, he received faith to be healed. Paul recognized this, shouted for him, and stand up on his feet, and the man leaped and walked. So the Bible study is Paul. And this guy who is crippled, he received the faith of God. He was able, what? Gumaling siya. Okay? Now, tingnan nyo ang response ng mga taong naandoon. Ano yung ginawa nila? Sabi nila sa verse 11 to 14, and the crowds when they saw that Paul had Paul had done, lifted up their voices, shouting in the in 
like Kaunian language, the gods have come down to us in human form. See? They called Barnabas Zeus and they called Paul because he led in the discourse Hermes, God of speech. <laughs> Tinawag si, si Barnabas Zeus, okay? At si Paul Hermes. And the priest of Zeus, o yung pare nila doon, was at the entrance of the town, brought bulls and garlands to the city gates and wanted to join the people in offering sacrifice. They thought Paul and Barnabas is God na bumaba sa lupa, nagpagaling doon sa, ano, sa crippled men. And they're willing to what? To bring a sacrifice. Lystra was a city dedicated to worshiping idols, said Daniel Paul. So much so, the people thought Paul and Barnabas were the gods they worship coming down to earth to perform miracles. O, napagkamala nila si Barnabas at saka si Paul na mga Diyos na sinasamba nila na bumaba sa lupa. Even the citizen of Lystra, along with their priest, a worshiper of the demon god Jupiter, wanted to bring sacrifices to Paul and Barnabas. This is what they would typically do to, to their demon gods. Yan ang kanilang normal na ginagawa sa kanilang mga Diyos. So idols can't walk. Thus, the people that worship them displays those same characteristics. Kaya, isa sa mga reason, pag nakakita ka ng crippled, one of the reasons is there is an idol over his life. At pag nagkaroon siyang pananampalataya kay Lord, something that can happen, he can be released from that idol and he will walk. First Corinthians 12.4 Idols also mess your spiritual gifts. Sinisira din niya ang iyong spiritual gifts, itong idol na ito. First Corinthians 12 verse 4 Now there are distinct varieties and distinction of endowments. It means gifts, extraordinary powers, distinguishing certain Christians due to the power of the divine grace operating in their soul by the Holy Spirit. And they vary, but the Holy Spirit remains the same. So sinasabi ni Paul, uh, each Christian, kapag naborn again, may gifts na ibibigay si Lord. At yung gifts na yun, it varies. Okay? Iba-iba. But kahit iba-iba yung gift, it coming out from the same Spirit, coming out from the Holy Spirit. These worthless idols and their evil altars in our soul are also affecting our, sp our spiritual gifts. It affects your spiritual gifts. Kaya kung minsan, yung may mga gifts of prophecy, pero kung minsan, bakit iba-iba ang nakikita niya? Kung minsan, mali-mali ang nakikita niya. Pero hindi ibig sabihin mali yung nakita niya. He already saw the realm of the spirit pero bakit ang nakikita niya laging negative? I've experienced this. I've met people who are, live, who are operating in the prophetic pero madalas ang mga prophetic nila negative. May mararamdaman kang kakaiba sa espiritu mo pag siya inagsalita ng mga prophetic word. Bakit? It is influenced by the idols over his soul or over his uh, life. Because some of these idols are blind. Daniel. They can block you from seeing in the spirit and receiving dreams and vision the right way, the right thing. Kaya nga, di ba, sa courts of heaven, pag nagpipetition tayo, lagi nating sinasabi sa mga seers, we want you to focus on what is the decision of the courts. Pero napapansin nyo, may mga time na may magsasabi na siya, ah, pastor, pastor, may nakita ako, merong bundok, 
may nakita ko may tao, may nakita ko ganitong bagay. I'm not saying that's wrong. What he saw is the realm of the spirit. At tandaan niyo po, ang realm of the spirit ay malawak. It divided into two, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. You see? And idols can mess your spiritual gift. Kaya we encourage the seers to develop, practice their gift, especially in going to the courts of heaven. What they need to focus is the court, the judge, what is the decision of the judge? Idols not only cause hearing and speech problem in the natural, but they also block you from hearing the voice of God while hindering you from releasing an accurate prophetic word. I'm not saying that person is a false prophet. No, you cannot do that. You cannot. Uh, target. You cannot accuse that person of a false prophet. He might have an idol probably operating over his life. Kaya ano, instead ang nakikita niya ay yung gustong ipakita ni Lord, the thing na gustong ipakita ni Lord, ipakita ni Lord ay nabablock ng idols na nag operate sa buhay niya. Since idols can walk, they can interfer interfere with your spiritual walk with the Lord. By leading you off the path of righteous into sin. Look at 1 Corinthians 12, 1 and 2. He started explaining, Paul started explaining about the gifts of the Spirit. Chapter 12. Chapter 13, he talks about love. Chapter 14 is the operation of the gift. So sa chapter 12, anong sabi niya? Now about the spiritual gifts or the special endowments of supernatural energy. Brethren, I do not want you to be misinformed. Verse 2, you know that when you were heathen, you were led of after idols that could not speak. Napasin nyo? Sa statement ni Paul, he talks about the idols. He connect it with the operation of the gifts of the spiritual gifts of God. First Corinthians 12 tell, Paul tells Paul tells the believers at Corinth that even though he was about to discuss the special gifts of the spirit, he had a warning for them. And what is that warning? I do not need you to be misinformed. You know that when you were hidden, you were led of after idols that could not speak. Any idols in their bloodline, even in their own life, were going to interfere with their ability to move in the gifts of the Spirit. Yun ang ibig sabihin ni Paul. Kaya sabi niya, I don't want you to be misinformed. Kasi yung, yung idols in your family line, in your bloodline, will interfere with your ability to move with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Yun ang sinasabi ni Paul. My great grandfather is a priest na nag-asawa. And then later we found out marami rin palang asawa. You see? That is the idol that is running down my bloodline. And in the family, I was the first one who got born again. At tandaan niyo po, sa bawat pamilya, may nire-raise up si Lord na born again. Ano ang trabaho niya? He will be the deliverer of his family. Because God is concerned with families. So God will raise up someone who is his deliverer, small letter D, in his family. Remember, Gideon was raised up by the Lord to be a deliverer not only for the nation of Israel, but for his own family. Because the father of <laughs> Gideon was a high priest of Baal. Paul knew something about idols that he wants you to know. They will block your gifts. Kaya kuminsan may mga nagtatanong sa akin, Pastor, why is it that I cannot see in the realm of the Spirit? If you are saying, seeing, that seeing 
in the spirit is a natural thing. It is more of ability than a gift. Why is it that many Christians cannot see in the realm of the spirit? There is an idol. It's either in your bloodline or in your soul that is blocking your ability to see in the spirit. We need to heed Paul's warning in the church today. That's why a lot of people are attending the church, hearing the pastor preach, but they never internalize what the pastor had preached. Example, every Sunday, may pumupunta sa unahan na nagtetestify at nagsishare about tithes and offering. But you try try to make a, make a survey in your churches. Majority, not I'm not saying all. Majority of the churches in the Philippines, there are only 20% people who are faithfully giving their tithes and offering. Why? Eh, linggo-linggo may nagsisil ng tithes. Gas-gas ka na nga yung Malakay chapter 3 verse 8 to 10. Kaya pansin ninyo sa simbahan, kapag tithes and offering na, maraming tao, tao ang tumatayo at pumupunta sa CR. Kaya sabi ng pastor, para masolve ko ang problema na yan, naglagay siya ng offering box doon sa CR. Para kung sila man ay tatayo at magsi-CR during the time of offering, o meron pa silang paglalagyan ng kanilang tithes. Nakakatawa, but that is reality. What causes them to be blind, not to see the, the revelation of God? That idols. If you're going to demonstrate the wonder-working power of God in this earth, you must divorce yourself from every idol you have been pursuing and then be healed of all idols in your bloodline. That's the only solution. Another one is food offered to idols. Naalala nyo nung sa Jerusalem Council, nagkaroon ng marami ng mga Gentiles ang naborn again. At sabi ng mga party of the Pharisee, sabi niya, no, 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 yung dapat mga Gentiles, dapat they need to follow the law. If they are going to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, they have to follow the law. Di ba nagkaroon ng debate? And finally, James made this uh, decision. They call it Jerusalem Council. Nasabi nila na uh, they have to abstain from eating food offered to idols. Eating blood. O, oh, di ba? So I think tatlo o apat lang. Not the whole law. The, what we call that? Yung tinatawag na uh, ceremonial law. And then yung law about the food. Hindi na require yun sa mga Gentiles. I think apat lang. Isa doon ay yung food offered to idols. Why? In most cases, the loudest idols that control us are food idols. Mabigat itong bagay na ito. Wala tayong exempted dito eh. No, meron yung may sakit na ano. Anong tawag doon? Yung sakit ni Karen Carpenters. Feeling niya lang siya ay tumataba kaya hindi kumakain ng maayos. The main rituals that always took place in ancient idol worshiping ceremonies involved feasting. That's why the word altar means table. That's why eating is part, it's an altar. Kaya di ba merong uh, sinu-celebrate ang mga Hudyo every Friday. They call it Shabbat. Oh, they eat together and they talk the word of God. And that table, actually, it's an altar of the Lord. Idol worshippers always brought food that they dedicated to and sacrificed to an idol. I-contextualize natin. Di ba? Piesta. 
naghahanda sila. Pero sabi ng iba, hindi okay lang kumain sa piyesta. Okay lang makipiyesta kasi ano, yung kin- yung hinanda naman ng pinuntahan ko ay hindi naman inoffered sa idol para sa bisita. Huwag kayong magbaka sakali na ganun. Why they would do that? Not only for the visitors. It is food. Actually, that's food offered to an idol. Well, nasa sa iyo yan, pero kung ako tatanungin nyo, I will, I will not eat. I'm sorry, I will not eat. Magbayad na lang ako sa restaurant, doon na lang ako kakain. They believe that eating food that was first dedicated to idols enabled them to become one with the demon god the idol represented. Consequentially, they feasted lavishly on the food sacrificed to idols. Eh, paano pastor kung hindi naman in-offer sa idols? Okay. 1 Corinthians 10.7 Do not be worshiper of false god as some of them were. As it is written, people sat down to eat and drink. These are the sacrifices offered to the golden cup at Horeb. And rose to sport or means to dance and give way to jesting and hilarity. So excessive eating and drinking are a form of worship the ancient practice to honor their gods and become one of them. So, kahit hindi yan piyas sa mga kapatid, if you did eating excessively, that is what? An idol. It's a worship, a form of worship to an idol. The demon gods behind idols are accustomed to having food sacrificed to them in worship. Oh, tinan nyo sa mga temple ng mga Buddhist, nagbibring sila ng pagkain. Di ba? 1 Corinthians 10, 19-20. What do I imply then? The food of, offered to idols is intrinsically changed by the fact and amounts to anything or to an idol itself is a living thing. No, I am suggesting that the pagan sacrifice They offer, in effect, to demons, to evil spiritual powers, and not to God at all. I do not want you to fellowship and be partners with diabolical spirit by eating at their feast. Kaya, I advise people, I advise Christians not to go to fiesta. Kung pagkain lang naman ang habol nila, ay eh, bumili ka na lang pagkain sa bahay mo, mabibili mo yung gusto mo. Paul is stating that overeating is not just bad for you. It is also has grave spiritual consequences. It attracts an idol. You can form a fellowship and partnership with diabolic spirit by eating at their feast. And when we turn food into an idol that we use to comport us and medicate our pain, ito mabigat. We are inviting to attack every part of your life, including your physical bodies. May mga tao na outlet nila ng kanilang kalungkutan, ng kanilang stress, kakain ng marami. At doon sila nakakakuha ng satisfaction. If that is the source of your satisfaction, you are inviting demons, idols, by just eating. Food idols can also open the door to Satan to attack our families, marriage, finances, businesses, ministry, and even churches. Mag-call ka ng prayer meeting. Prayer and fasting. Kukunti lang ang atin. Mag-call ka ng kainan. Ang dami nga atin. Pati mga mag-anak nilang unbeliever, a-attend yan. 
Hindi lang yun. Disease such as tumors, balls, and hemorrhoids afflicting your body may be due to this idol in your soul. I give you an example in 1 Samuel. Naalala nyo in chapter 5, ninakaw ng mga Pilistin yung Ark of the Covenant, the highest symbol of the presence of God in the Old Testament. And they thought if they got this Ark of the Covenant, they will be more powerful because that was their belief. They have an altar of Dagon in their city. They have the idol and they become powerful because of that idol. Di ba? And they decided to store the tabernacle in the temple of Asdod right next to the statue of their god Dagon. Ano nangyari? The following day, bumagsak sino? Si Dagon. Hindi pa rin sila nakontento. Ibinilig nila uli. The following day, putol yung mga kamay at mga paa ni Dagon. And the idol's head and hands were cut off. Alam niyo bakit? <laughs> There is a principle that the Lord is telling us here. The Lord wants us to build an altar in our homes, in our community. Because the altars are gateways of the spirit being to enter the earth. Tandaan niyo po. The kingdom, the spirits in the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness cannot enter the earth without an altar So pansin ninyo ang mga streets named after the idols, name of the barangay. Alam nyo ba dito sa Maguindanao, merong barangay dito na ang pangalan ay Barangay Satan. Hmm. Ang nagpangalan niya na yung anak ni Ampatuan. Come on. Meron kang diploma ng anak mo nakalagay doon, graduated from mababang paaralan ng ni Satanas o ele Satan Elementary School or National High School of Satan. Okay, you imagine that. These are idols. Hmm. So the spirit from the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of God cannot enter the earth without an altar. Eh, mas maraming altar si Satan sa isang lugar. That's the reason why makikita mo yung oppression, yung tinatawag na contradictions in life na nangyayari sa mga tao. Poverty and sicknesses. It happens. Oh. Eh, ang sabi ni Lord, He came to give life and make it more abundantly. Eh, kung walang altar si Lord, paano papasok yung mga angels dun sa lugar niyo? O paano ang Diyos mag-intervene in the affairs of men kung walang altar? So, tandaan nyo, there are, two, there are no two altars in one place can operate. One altar has to submit. And the superior altar prevail. Like what happened to 1 Samuel chapter 5. Dalawang altar. The altar of God and the altar of demons. Ano nangyari sa altar of demons? They just surrender. Hmm. Ang tawag po doon, battle of altars. So you don't have to shout to the demons for them to leave your community. Isa lang ang gagawin natin. Mag-build tayo ng altar of the Lord and continues to sacrifice. Okay, mga kapatid. Ha? When I say altar, hindi lang basta pwedeng gagawa ka lang ng house of prayer. Or hindi lang yan yung ano, kumuha ka lang labing dalawang bato na katulad ng ginawa ni Elijah at ni ano, ni Abraham, pinagpatong-patong yung bato at binuhusan ng oil. That's not an altar. An altar has to have a priest. A sacrifice. Nakuha niyo po? Yung altar bali wala. Walang kapangyarihan pag walang priest at pag walang sacrifice. An altar is not a monument. Nakuha niyo po? 
Pag walang alta, walang priest and sacrifice, monumento lang yung altar mo. So anong nangyari? And the hand of the Lord was heavy upon the people of Asdod, and he caused mice to spring up, and there was very deadly destruction, and he smote the people with very painful tumors or boils. And the hand of the Lord was against the city, causing an exceedingly great panic at the deaths of the from a, from the flake, for he afflicted the people of the city both small and great, and tumors or boils broke out on them. Oh. The King James Version passage says the Lord smote them with emeralds. You know what is emeralds? In Hebrew is tekor. Ibig sabihin to burn, a boil, or ulcer from inflammation, especially a tumor in the anus. So dyan yung nanggalig yung salitang hemorrhoids. Since it was the Lord that smote the Philistines with the sickness, you might ask, is he doing the same thing to us because of our idolatry? Our own sin of idolatry can provide a legal ground for the enemy to cause this type of affliction to manifest in our bodies. Yun ang ibig sabihin nun. Yes, it was the Lord's doing. Why? We open, the people open up the gates. The people gave the enemy a legal right to destroy them. Today, remember you are the ark of God. You carry his presence. 1 Corinthians 3.16 says that we are the temple of God. Spiritual warfare always follow when you allow an idol to come into your life. Spiritual warfare happens. May gera. Every time you open yourself to an idol, there is a war that's happening. Why? There is, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And these idols also get their legal rights through accusation generated by your, by your law-breaking habit. You violate the law. So malang magawa ang Diyos. Kaya kahit gusto ko niyang pagalingin, hindi ka, niya, hindi ka gagaling. Why? The enemy has a legal right over your life. Unless you go to the court at tanggalin mo yung accusation ng enemy by pleading the blood of the Lamb. Next, idols. Idols of reason. This is what we call the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Si Paul, nang biminister siya sa Acts 17. So he reasoned and argued in the synagogue with the Jews and those who worship there. And in the marketplace where assemblies are held day after day, any who chance to be there. One of the idols that Apostle Paul encountered in Athens is the idol of reason. These people of Athens love to reason and argue endlessly. Anything that is new, new concept or philosophy, these people wants to listen. They even debated on spiritual things. They didn't fully understand it. <laughs> Even today, paano ka dami man nagdidebate sa Bible na hindi man nila naintindihan yung pinagdidebatehan nila. One time I saw this guy, Suryano, making a debate with a pastor. At sabi niya, ang Diyos ay may puwet. Sabi naman ng pastor, no, God is a spirit. Paano magkakaroon ng puwet? Ang Diyos ay spirito siya. Sabi niya, basa. Nabasa niyo yung 1 King chapter 22. Sabi niya, and, the, and I saw the Lord seated on His throne. O see, nakaupo ang Diyos. Di may puwit. <laughs> That's how they explain it. They reason. They use it the mind. Nakakatawa. Di ba? The city of Athens was full of intellectual elites who love and worship their educational ancestries. The idol of reason is especially dangerous when it comes to matters of faith. Why? Because faith requires a person to believe in the invisible evidence of God's word. Nima? 
the evidence, yes, faith has evidence, but the evidence are invisible. Hindi mo makita. Diba? Faith is what? Something, uh, faith is the evidence of things hoped for. Oh, diba? Eh, anong nangyayari? You use reason. Oh, example. Tights. <laughs> Sabi ni Lord, you bring the tights. Because the tithes is holy unto the Lord. It means to say, hindi mo pa kinikita yung pera, kanya na yung 10%. And out of the 10%, you will give your offering. So ibig sabihin, pag nagbigay ka ng tithes, wala ka pang binibigay sa Diyos. Bakit? Isinusoli mo pa lang sa Diyos ang kanya. That's how you honor God. And then your reason says, ganito, eh 100% nga nung sweldo ko hindi magkasya. Magbibigay pa ako ng 10%. Eh, saan makakapunta ang 90%? You get my point. That is reason and logic. Unfortunately, intellectual people addicted to the idol of reason have difficult time receiving anything of faith. Kaya maraming Christian ngayon, Christiano na sila but they cannot walk by faith because of that idol. The idol of reason. They always reason. First Corinthians 1, 20 to 21. Where is the wise man or the philosopher? Where is the scribe, the scholar? Where is the investigator, the logician or lo or mahilig sa logic? The debater of this present time and age. Has that God shown up the nonsense and the fully of this word wisdom. Hmm. At kadugso niya, sabi niya, kung alam lang nila, sa chapter 2, sabi niya, sabi niya, nobody knows from the rulers of this world yung plano ng Diyos. Kasi kung alam ng mga demonyo ang plano ng Diyos, di sana hindi nila pinatay si Kristo. Na alam nila na yung kama hindi nila alam na yung kamatayan ni Kristo ang yun ang magtatalo sa kanila. That's why kapag binasa niyo ang prophecy ng Old Testament about the coming of Christ, it is always what? Hidden. Kumbaga sa intelligence information ay nakaano uh, encrypted. Hindi mo mabasa, hindi mo maintindihan. Because it is intentional, itinago ni Lord sa mga fallen son yung kanyang planong gawin. Kaya they were all surprised when the son of God came. And what they do? They just kill him. Alam niyo ba ako pang mamatay si Kristo? Marami nang ginawa si Satanas na gusto siyang, gusto siyang patayin. But it was not the right time. Kaya hindi pa dumating yung ganong klaseng kamatayin kay Kristo. For when the word with all its earthly wisdom, failed to perceive and recognize to know God by means of his own philosophy, God in his wisdom was pleased through the foolishness of preaching, salvation procured by Christ and to be had through him to save those who believe, who clung to and trusted in and relied on him. See? Earthly wisdom cannot save us. Earth, the wisdom cannot bring us to heaven. It's all by faith, by the grace of God. Kaya, yung mga may idol of reason, hirap sila natanggapin ang pamamaraan ng Diyos. Maraming nga nagkukwesyo sa amin about the course of heaven. Even though there are evidences in the Bible, 3,500 scriptures, they still don't believe it. Why? Reason. The idols of reason. Next is idols of philosophy. In Acts 17, 18, and some also of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers encountered him and began to engage in discussions. And some said, what is this bubbler with this scrap hip learning trying to say? See? Sino ba itong tao na ito? Others said he seems to be an announcer of foreign deities because he preached Jesus and the resurrection. 
according to dictionary.com, philosophy is defined as the rational investigation of the truths and principles of being, knowledge, or conduct. So unfortunately, philosophy fails and get hijacked by dealing at its point of origin. Philosophy was used by the devil. If the foundational assumption behind it are wrong. For instance, Epicurean philosophers Paul found in Greece said the flesh was naturally evil. Ito yung philosophy nila. That the flesh are evil and uncontrollable. Therefore, allowed no restriction of any kind to the fulfillment of its fleshly desire. Naniniwala sila, is controllable. the flesh is incontrollable. Kaya ang kailangan nalang dagawin because of this, their philosophy, just allow the flesh to do what it wants. Nakuha niya? This philosophy lead to sortable evil, especially unrelenting indulgence in sexual orgies of any kind. Kaya in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, di ba may disiplina na si Paul na a man, a young man was having sexual relation with his mother. Next is the philosophy and the idols of Ism. Ano yung Ism? Sabi nila, ah, ang problema ng Pilipinas ay yung komunismo. Sabi nila, ang problema ng Pilipinas ay yung de demo de uh, democracy or communism or socialism or capitalism. Pero sabi ng isa, oh hindi, ang problema ng Pilipinas ay ikaw mismo. Di ba? From this time, Jesus began to preach. Crying out, repent, change your mind for better. Heartily amend your ways with abhorrence of your passive for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Sabi niya, repent. The word repent in Greek is metanoia. It means to change the way you think. Repentance has nothing to do with what? Being sorry of your sin. That's most definition ng repentance na sinasabi natin. No. The etymology of the word, it means you change the way you think. Philosophy can create an idol idolatrous culture. You know, democracy? Ang tawag ko dyan is demon crazy. Democracy is not from God. Because the government of God is what? Theocracy. Example, Greek philosophers such as Socrates, Clisthenes, Plato, Aristotle created idols of reason, metaphysics, intellectualism, and philosophy. At ang dami yan, ang mga philosophy nila na pinaniwalaan nila, itinuro nila, inimpart at kinabubuhay ng marami. While some of these idols had a predeterminal effect on the culture, according to Wikipedia, it affects our culture. Like sa atin, wala tayong culture of uh, yung tinatawag na monarchy. Lumaki lahat, ta, karamihan sa atin, lumaki tayo sa lahat, lahat sa culture ng ano, democracy. Wala tayong concept ng ano, monarchy. Kaya minsan hindi natin maintindihan ang Biblia because the Bible is written in a concept of a monarchy. There was a story of in, in England, the king is going to pass to the street. To that street. So maraming tao, maabang. So they're crying, long live the queen, long live the queen. May isang babae na kilalang prostitute dun sa lugar, nakikipagsiksikan at gusto niyang makita yung pagdaan ng queen. At sabi ng mga taong sin, si, dinadaanan niya, sabi niya, Oy, you're not worthy to even to see the king because you're a prostitute. <laughs> sabi ni nung babae, yes, I am not worthy. But she is worthy. They have that concept of what? A monarchy. Tayo mga Pilipino, walang concept na ganyan. 
Kaya madalas, ang gusto natin sa simbahan is democracy. We, we elect the pastor. At pag hindi natin nagustuhan yung preaching ni pastor, we kick out the pastor. We elect the leaders of the church. Oh, look at the denomination. Yun ang kanilang concept nung kanilang ano, kultura. Mm. Even the church itself is affected by this uh, no, idol of philosophy. The impact these men still have on the worldview of people and, criteria, and the criteria upon which they judge, their experience continue to lead many to idolize reason. At tayo binabili pag, you know, pag isang tayo nagsasalita na ano, ang ganda magsalita pero wala namang laman. I want you to observe. Yung mga kandidato ngayon, tinan mo nga ang kampanya. Ay, mga kandidato, wala. No, nonsense naman ang sinasabi niya. Wala nga maliwano na, maliwanag na plataforma. Pero magugulat ka, maraming taong nakikinig. You see? <laughs> Why? Yung mga tao is what? They've been impact by this kind of worldview. Nito mga tao na ito. Then we have men like Karl Marx. Na siya yung nag-propagate uh, ng socialism or communism. Mussolini, fascism. Si Hitler, nazism. Whose ideology lead to the slaughter of millions of people. Because of this ideology, maraming pinatay ito. Enslavement of many and the financial explosion of the many by the few. Capitalism is one. Oh, like in the Philippines, sino mayaman? Yung elite, yung mga ano lang, mga oligarch. Alam niyo ba na ninety-eight percent of the Filipinos are poor. 2% of, of Filipinos controlled the economy of the Philippines. 2% families of this of Filipino families control the economies of the Philippines. The sea, the tan, the go, the Monte Verde, Monte Lebano, mga mayayaman ba? Mga pangalan na yan. The Uy, the U, the go. 2% controls the 98% wealth of the Philippines. And the 2% wealth of the Philippines, pinag-aagawa ng 98% ng mga Pilipino because of that philosophy. Capitalism. On a human level, the philosophy of democracy has resulted in the least flawed forms of human government. By allowing the many, the electorate, to choose and elect their political representative. And democracy has also produced very formidable idol that competes with God's sovereignty. Making it difficult for God's children to truly submit to the authority of the Holy Spirit. Daniel 2.21 mga kapatid, maliwanag. God, sabi niya, the Lord changes the time and season. He removed kings and he replaced one. So in other words, it is not the electorate, it's not the electorate of the, Pilip of the Philippines ang pipili ng presidente, mga kapatid. It is God. That's why the Filipino, the, the Christians in the Philippines, the body of Christ has to stand up on this principle na tinuturo ng Bible. Eh, ang daming mga Christian ang paniniwala pala nila maglaglagay sila ng mga kriteriya ng mga president? No. Tingnan niyo po sa Bible. 100 years before Cyrus, he was already prophesied. And Cyrus is a, is a wicked king. Madalas ang tawag ni Lord sa mga wicked king na nilagay niya, servant of the Lord. Oh. Mga kapatid, hindi, hindi tao ang mag-i-elect. 
We need to stand on this principle. It is God. So anong gagawin natin? We need, as a body of Christ, we need to come together and go to the courts of heaven and make petitions. And the Lord make it easy for us. Unlike in 2016, mas mahirap. Alam niyo kung bakit? Walang Christian na kumandidato. Oh. E ngayon, may tatlo po tayong Kristiyano na nagkandidato. So the Lord making it easier for us to choose. We have Jose Montemayor, a Christian, born again Christian. We have Ernie Abelia, he's a pastor. And we have Manny Pacquiao. Oh, you have three. I'm not saying na, oh, may tatlo kayo. Bahala na kayong pumili, tanong niyo si Lord. Hindi naman mag-i-intervene si Lord sa iyong political choice. Malaya ka pa rin pumili. But the ecclesia has to come together and go to the court and make petitions of this tree. That's why I've been uh, telling this. Sabi ko, sino po ba ang, ano, ang may connection dito sa tatlo na ito? Turuan natin about the courts of heaven and they themselves will go to the court and petition and make a submission before the court nung kanilang platform of government and their covenants to God and let the Lord make a choice. Who will be the next president? Eh sabi nila, ay hindi naman mananalo ang mga yan. Mababa sa survey. Ha kapatid, remember, the Lord has called us to walk by faith, not by philosophy. Eh sa philosophy ng democracy, ano? The voice of the people is the voice of God. Wrong. Philosophy lang yan ng democracy. That's not the philosophy of God. Kaya nga po, o oh, dito sa Davao, we've been praying even last year, na sabi, Lord, saan Lord, may kumandidato naman lang na Christian. Inatutokso na nga ako, mga kapatid, na mag-file kaya ako ng candidacy para lang may pagpilian ng Diyos. O oh, who knows, malay mo, maging mayor ako ng Dabao. But wala ba na akong narinig kay Lord? So I did not did do it. The other day, or last week, I found someone. Sabi niya, Pastor, may pangatlong kandidato sa Dabao City in the name of Hans Elizalde. He's a Christian. He's from Victory Chapel. Ay, nag, nakontak ko at nag-usap kami and he shared to me his testimony. And I'm doing a one-on-one -on -one teaching on him about the courts of heaven. Then sabi ko, let's go to the court and make petition of your candidacy. Because in the natural, you're not going to win. Di ba? Ang kalaban mo dito, Duterte, o kahit ang Duterte hindi mga kampanya dito, laging mananalo yan. Oh. But we don't know the ways of God. So when we go to the court and make petitions, eh mas mahirap na kalaban ang anghel. Hmm. Kahit padayain nila ang eleksyon, hindi nila madadaya ang anghel. Like what we did on 2016. The Lord spoke to us about Duterte, even though I don't like Duterte. But wala man ako magawa. Yun ang sabi ni Lord. Eh. So we make petition in the courts of heaven about Duterte. And it happens. History. Nadaya pa nga, sabi ni ano, dating commissioner. Dinaya pa nila ng limang milyon. Oh. Pero bakit hindi nanalo? Yung pandaraya nila is because it has been decided in the courts of heaven. Pero ngayon, mga kapatid, personally, I don't have a spiritual encounter with the Lord on how, on who will be the next president. And the only thing we can do now is talk to the three and let the three candidates, the official candidates, Teach them about the courts of heaven. If they believe, oh, let's go to the court. If they don't believe, well, no time magawa. The least that we can do is what? Make a general petition. Ganun na lang. Kasi ayaw man lang maniwala eh. Actually, I had an appointment with the, with the pastor of Montemayor. But up to now, hindi pa rin realize it. I don't know. Malapit na. 60 days na lang. 
In a democratic government, the majority rules. In the kingdom of God, it takes two or three. Unfortunately, this type of government is diametrically opposed to the kingdom of God. Democracy is actually opposed to the kingdom of God. It is not God's way. Kasi lang, wala man magagawa ng Diyos. Yun ang pinili ng mga Pilipino na form of government. Mas mabuti nga dapat mag-change tayo, mag-shift tayo into parliamentary para maiwasan ang ganito klaseng corruption. In the kingdoms, the government is solely on the shoulder of the king. Isaiah 22. Di ba sabi niya? Jehovah is our judge. The Lord is our lawmaker. And God is our king. <clears throat> in politics 101, or in democracy, uh, judiciary, lawmaker, or uh, the Congress, and the executive, three branches of government, they are separated. Magkakahiwalay. What purpose for the check and balance? Isaiah 9.6, for, for to us a child is born, born, to us, a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. So the king, when we talk about the kingdom of God, we are talking about government, mga kapatid. Uy, mahaba na itong message ko. Ah. So when a person is raised in a democratic representative, government comes to faith in the Messiah, Jesus. The war between their idol of self-determination and the kingdom's prerequisite of total depends, dependency on God immediately ensues. Nakakaroon na ano, clash. Yung dalawa na yun. Christians from democratic society suddenly find themselves at odds with a God who can care less about what they think. <laughs> so for many of them, the idol of democracy that sits on their heart is quickly offended. Kaya pag na-offend yan, ano mang mangyayari? They will leave the church. They will go into church hopping. Or we call it grasshopper. They will, leave, they will uh, transfer from one church to another church. That's why, no ako'y nagpapastor pa sa Bicol, I never entertain yung mga grasshopper. Yung mga gustong lumipat, alam niyo bakit? Kaya ang lilipat, may problema doon sa pinanggalingan niyang simbahan. So when you invite them na maging member ng church mo, you're inviting problems. Sakit ng ulo yan. Kaya ang gawin mo na lang, hayaan mo lang siya umaten. Pag nakapagpatawad na siya, itaboy mo na uli doon sa kanyang simbahan. Last. Second to the last, idols of sexual perversion. This is, mga kapatid, ang pinakamabigat na idols. Sabi dito sa Romans, and by them the glory and majesty and excellence of immortal God were exchanged for and represented by images resembling mortal man and birds and beasts and reptiles. Therefore God gave them up in the lust of their own hearts to sexual impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, abandoning them to the degrading power of sin. Because they exchanged the truth for God, for a lie and a worship and serve the creature rather than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. So be it. For this reason, God gave them over and abandoned them to vile affection in degrading passions. And by them, the glory and majesty and excellence of immortal God were exchanged for and represented by images resembling mortal man and birds and beasts and reptiles. Therefore, God gave them up in, their la in the lust of their own hearts to sexual impurity, to dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, abandoning them to the degrading power of sin, because they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. So be it. For this reason, God gave them over and abandoned them to vile affection and degrading passions.
inulit ko lang, sorry. For the women exchange their natural affection for a natural abandoned one. And men also turn from natural relations with women and were set ablaze, burning out consumed. With lust for one another, men committing shameful acts with men and suffering in their own bodies and personalities the inevitable consequences and penalty of their wrongdoing and going astray, which was their fitting retribution. And so, since they did not see fit to acknowledge God or approve of Him or consider Him worth the knowing, God gave them over to a base and condemned mind to do things not proper or decent, but loathsome. So this is the result. When you invite this idol of sexual perversion in your life, what happens? God gave you up and condemned to, to a base and condemned mind. That's why look at the reasoning of those people in, in the LBTQ community. Diba? Base and condemned mind. The reasoning. That's the result of the idol. One of the most potent idols that seem to rule every generation of men is the idol of sexual perversion. Look at the commercial. The TV commercials. Kalendaryo nga eh. Ito yung kaunaw na nakita kong commercial noon. Commercial ng alak, White Castle, Ram. Ang model si Gloria Diaz na katupis sa kasakay sa kabayo. Wala naman kinalaman sa alak. Right? Mga kalendaryo. Di ba? Kalendaryo ng kumpanya, kalendaryo ng mga product, lahat yan na yan. No? Ginagamit yung babae na nakatupis. We live in, in such a sexualized culture that being homosexual or lesbian or transgender is now mainstream. Okay na ngayon. Unlike uh, like in South Korea before, walang mga LGBTQ na pinalalabas sa television nila. Nung kami na we went to Korea, tinanong ko yung pastor, sabi ko, pastor, ang hilig niyong mag, ano, mag, uh, ang tawag niyo? Mag sauna. <laughs> First time ko yung mag sauna. Pagpasok mo doon, ang ibibigay sa'yo, yung maliit lang na tuwalya, face towel, ganyan. Ilalabas ka ngayon. Nakahubutuban ka ngayon. <laughs> yung mga pastor nung lumabas doon sa ano, papasok doon sa, from the locker, papasok doon sa uh, sauna. Ang binigay lang sa kanila, gano'n na tuwalya, maliit lang. So nakatapis doon sa harap ano kanila <laughs> at naglalakad sila. <laughs> Because they are not used. Pero yung mga Koreano, Sige, uh, alam, sige lang noon. Then tinanong ko yung pastor, di ba kayo nag-aalala rito ang kapakin nyo ng mga bakla? Sabi nila, uy, walang nag-ano rito, nag-expose na ganyan. Takot yung mga bakla, yun sabi niya. Pero ngayon, tingnan nyo sa Korea, ang mga palabas nila, nag-start na naglabasan yung mga LGBTQ. We're not condemning them. It is the word of God na nagsasabi, hindi tayo. Why? tayo ang ating gagawin to love them. But the Bible is the one saying kung ano nangyayari sa kanila when they invite this sexual perversion. Pero I tell you, it's not only the LBD, LGBTQ++++++. All men and women, regardless of sexual uh, preference, we are all affected by this idol of sexual perversion. The Apostle Paul is very clear. By the Holy Spirit, the same-sex lifestyle is rooted in idolatry, which is rooted in worshiping alternative sexual preferences against prescribed biblical standard, the sex between male and female. Even though sex between males and people can also be sinful when it's practiced outside the covenant of marriage, it is, however, a biblical form. Please take note how Apostle Paul in Romans 1, 24 connects worshiping idol to sexual impurity such as same-sex relations. Suddenly, the idol of sexual perversion has also infected the body of Christ worldwide. 
look at the church today. Many pastors or leaders in the church are, are affected by these idols. Next, idols that tickles the ear. Sabi ng Acts 17, 20, 21, For you set forth some startling things, foreign and strange to our ears. Sabi kay Paul. Kaiba yung sinasabi mo ah. Bago yan ah. We wish to know therefore just what these things mean. Oh. Eh yung mga philosopher sa Athens, gusto nila yon yung mga bagay na nakakapagkilig nung kanila mga tenga. Nakakatikil sa kanila mga tenga. Mga bago yun ah. For Athenians, all of them, and a foreign resident and visitor among them, spend all their leisure time in nothing except of telling or hearing something newer than the last. Gusto nila makinig doon sa mga bago na mga philosophy. And when Paul arrived there and is planning about Jesus Christ and His resurrection, sabi niya kakaiba ito. One of the idols that Paul faced in Athens was the idol that the Bible says, will be very common in the last days before the second coming of Messiah. This is common. Ano yon? It's the idol of the Bible. The Bible calls the spirit of itching ear. The spirit of itching ear. This is an idol that conditions men's spirit and soul to listen only to what tickles their ear without bringing them into the knowledge of truth. Mas gusto nila doktrina. Doctrina lang. This idol causes people to ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. 2 Timothy 4.3-4, the Bible declares, For time is coming when people will not tolerate sound and wholesome instruction, but having ears itching for something pleasing and gratifying, they will gather to themselves one teacher after another. That's the reason why mayroong mga church hopper, palipat-lipat sila ng simbahan. Sabi nila to a considerable number chosen to suffer, satisfy their own liking and to foster the errors they hold and will turn aside from hearing the truth and wonder of into bits and man-made fictions. This idol of the itching ear is evident today as the body of Christ is full of church hoppers. Those who can never submit to godly authority. Karamihan ng mga umaalis sa simbahan ayaw mag-submit sa kanilang leader na inilagay ng Diyos. Instead, they charge up until they find a church governed by a pastor who will tell them whatever they want to hear. This idol makes it difficult for people to digest the truth of the gospel of the kingdom of God or a gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Second to the last, even COVID-19 exposes our idols. Alam niyo ba yun? There has been a virus that has rapidly changed the world, killed thousands and shaken the economies of the nations, like the coronavirus widely referred to as COVID-19. Bakit? They all began the is to issue national lockdowns stay home at population quarantines. And because of that, they banned the public gatherings, including yung simbahan. Social distancing bans and shut down most businesses and including sport and entertainment activities. Nawala na yung PBA. Nawala na yung Cine. Diba? Even church gatherings were temporarily banned and expose the virus expose our cultural addiction to the idols of sport arts and entertainment sabi nga ng iba ay salamat wala nang church di hindi na ako obligado mag tights at na expose din yung karamihan ng mga pastor na umaasa lang sa tights paano sila magso-survive yun yung challenge ng kanilang faith and also, it, it increases exponentially yung suicide buong mundo, mga kapatid. Because a lot of people were depressed. Now, in Acts 17.22, they worship the demons. So Paul is standing in the center of Aeropagus. 
men of Athens, sabi niya, I perceive that every way, on every hand, and with every turn I make, that you are most religious, are most religious or very reverent to demons. Bakit? Nakita ni Paul sa Acts 17, to the unknown God. Sabi niya, may monumento kayo rito, may altar kayo, dedicate to the unknown God. When Paul began to challenge the idolatrous structure of the ancient city of Athens, he discovered the mystery behind their idolatrous passion. They are unknowingly worshipping demons. Yan ang sabi ni Paul, they are worshipping demons. Paul wanted them to know that they were actually worshipping demonic entities with malicious intent towards human race. Look at the festivals in every towns and cities and provinces. These festivals are dedicated to demons. Yung festival dito sa ano, sa Dabao, it's dedicated to demons. Nilegalize lang nila in a form of tourism. Consequentially, all idol worship is either directly or indirectly related to the demonic entity that serve as the power source behind the things we idolize. Meron nga ginawa doon sa ano? Sa sa Kapis. Yung municipal council nagkaroon sila ng ano, uh, ano man tawag doon? Resolution approving yung Aswang Festival. And the body of Christ, they challenge it Kahit even doon sa council, talo sila. Kahit mas maraming bumoto na gawin yung Aswang Festival. So the first day celebration of Aswang Festival, what the Christian did, they worship the Lord in an auditorium. You know what happens? The mayor is speaking in that festival. At sa harapan ni mayor, nag-away at nagsaksakan yung may tao doon nagsaksakan sa harapan niya. Right there in there, the mayor make a declaration. Simula ngayon, tapos na itong Aswang Festival. You see? Ano nangyari? Nanalo pa rin yung festival ni Lord. It's no wonder God hates idolatry because idol is still the glory that rightfully belongs to Him while causing men to fellowship, to fellowship with, with demons. Kaya nung they start to celebrate that Aswang Festival, Nagkagulo sila doon. Nagsaksakan. Oh. And the Holy Spirit wants us to set free from all idols which are affecting us with passion and mindless thoughts that we cannot control. Kaya yung mga tao, di na control, nagkagulo sila. Because it is the demons behind them. Let's face it. Idols are literally driving us crazy. Kaya ang tawag ko sa democracy, demons crazy. So as I pass along the carefully observe your object of worship, I came also upon an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. Now what you are already worshiping is unknown. This I set forth to you, the God who, who produced and formed the world and all things in it being Lord of heaven and earth does not dwell in hand in handmade shrine neither he is served by human hands as though he is lacked anything for it is he himself who gives life and breath and all things to all people so god wants every member of the body body of christ to confront the idols in our soul in our culture by their own admission the grecians thought Jesus whom Paul preached was just another idol in desperate need of recognition and cultural relevance. Yun ang pagkaitindi nila. Jesus is not an idol. He is God incarnate, creator of the universe and everything in it. But how could they accept Jesus when he was surrounded by so many other competing deities? Sige nga, paano niya tatanggapin si Jesus? Ang daming deities na silang pinagpipilian. 
So doesn't they describe the the current spiritual condition of the world we live in today? It's a time to tear down the altars of these competing idols so the glorious light of Jesus can shine in our soul like a city on a hill. Let us now pray. Now that we realize that we have idols in our lives, in our soul, even in our bodies, your spirit is now uh, that is where the Holy Spirit dwells. But in our soul, there is still idols. Kaya po mga kapatid, let us come before the Lord. Tayo po ay manalangin sa Panginoon. Let us go to the courts of heaven. The only way to defeat this idol is only in the courts of heaven. I want you to imagine yourself. Use your sanctified imagination right now. Remember the word prayer is to enter into the holy presence of God. Every time we pray, what happens is we are not praying here on earth. We are praying there in the very presence of God. I want you to imagine that you are now standing in the courts of heaven. Let us pray. Father, Heavenly Father, I ask for the court of heaven to be seated and the books to be opened as I come before the judge of all the earth to plead my case so I can be justified and proven right. I'm here in court with my official representative, the Holy Spirit, who is my advocate and my counselor. Heavenly Father, I surrender all right to self-representation. Instead, I ask my defense attorney and mediator of the new covenant, the Lord Jesus Christ, to represent me in your royal courtroom. Heavenly Father, I bring my case to your Supreme Court and to your grace court to face all charges and prosecute all idols and evil altars that are controlling my life and bloodline in Jesus' name. I am seeking deliverance from any soul wounds that have caused me to break your first commandment. I am seeking a verdict of release from this court. I now enter a plea of guilty into the courts of records because the Bible says in Matthew 5.25, come to terms quickly with your opponents at law while you are with him on the way so that your opponent does not hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you are thrown into prison. Lord, since I am under oath, I cannot lie about my sinful activities and the iniquities of my bloodline that are connected to idolatry and erecting evil altars. I agree with my legitimate accusation brought by Satan against me and my bloodline. And I submit a plea of guilty to all Satan's churches that are connected to any idolatry that my ancestor or I ever committed. I now formally submit my guilty plea to the court in Jesus' name. It is also written, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. As I am called to testify in the witness stand, I first humbly repent of all charges leveled against me so that I can overcome the enemy through the power of the blood and the word of my testimony. I repent for breaking the first commandment, Lord, and setting up altars in my life and bloodline that are connected with all demon gods that have caused me vision problems both in the natural and in the spirit. I repent for setting up altars in my life and bloodline that are connected with all demon gods that have caused me any kind of deafness in the natural and in the spirit. 
I repent for worshiping idols and setting up altars in my life and bloodline that are connected with all demon gods that have caused me any kind of speech problem in the natural and in the spirit. I repent for worshiping idols and setting up altars in my life and bloodline that are connected with all demon gods that have, that have caused me to be crippled in the natural and in the spirit. I repent for worshiping idols and setting up altars in my life and bloodline that are connected with all demon gods that have been messing with my natural and spiritual gifts. I repent for worshiping idol and setting up altars in my, my, in my life and bloodline that are connected with all demon gods that have caused me to eat and be addicted to foods offered to idols, both in the natural and in the spirit. Heavenly Father, I place my sin that of my ancestral bloodline under the blood of Jesus, so I can overcome the enemy through my Redeemer's blood in Jesus' name. As I continue to testify in this court, I also decree, declare that I am under the power of, of the pre and unmerited grace of God. Since the Bible says it's impossible to keep the whole law, I need your redemptive grace. I declare that where my sin of idolatry has increased, and abounded, your grace has increased the more to overshadow my sin and even superabound over it. I also declare Romans 4.16 over myself. It is written, therefore, the promise is the outcome of faith and depends on faith in order that it may be given to an act of grace to make it stable and valid and guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the devotees and adherents to the law, but also those who share the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for releasing us. We thank you so much. We declare that because of the blood of Jesus, the power of his grace, I must be acquitted of all the charges of breaking the first commandment and not placing God first in my life. We thank you, Father, today for releasing us. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have that prayer, believe God that the Lord has dealt every altar of idols over your soul right now. And let us now acknowledge the blood of Jesus over our life as we do this communion today. You can now get your elements for I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me let us now partake the bread In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us partake. 